uh, a motion for the approval of tonight's meeting agenda, please. Do I have enough on here? Scott, thank you. And Russell, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. And a motion for the approval of the regular meeting from December 1st, 21, please. So moved. Julie, and a second. Russell, all in favor? Aye. 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 And a motion of the approval of the minutes from the special meeting on December 15th, 2021. Russell, and a second. Julie, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. 5.1, Mr. Corey is here with us tonight and he's gonna present the Fall Scholar Athletes. Hi everyone, good to see you. Happy New Year. Um, so I uh, just texted Kyle to see if he can pull up uh, the presentation. I have it printed. Um, he's doing that now. So um, we will, or I, I'm going to read off uh, our Fall Scholar Athletes this year. Um, uh, we were fortunate to have uh, almost all of our teams make it. Only a couple did not. Um, uh, as you know, uh, or as I'll remind uh, most of you know, Scholar Athlete teams are um, awarded by New York State uh, for any team that has a cumulative average above a 90. Uh, it's a very prestigious honor. Uh, students have to work very hard uh, to do this, especially when you think um, uh, the size of our teams. Uh, we also, as a district, recognize uh, the state level. They, they really only recognize varsity um, athletics, but uh, we we do recognize JV here. And then um, the state has started awarding uh, patches to um, athletes who have a 90 or above, but aren't their, their team didn't make uh, the cumulative average. Um, uh, 90 or above as a team. So let me Kyle, are you able to pull it up? Okay. Thank you. Yep, perfect. Thank you. All right, so first we'll start uh, with the Varsity Girls Swim Team. Yeah, I know, I appreciate that. I'm, uh, you've blown it up. But uh, we are merged uh, with Lions uh, on the Varsity Girls Swim Team. Uh, cumulative average 97.6, Coach Rebecca Yuhas and our athletes Melanie Bullock, Alicia Hernandez, Bria Romano, Emily Taylor, Jenna Downey, Lauren Lichty, Rita Romano, and Emelina Wilk. Our varsity girls volleyball team, a perennial uh, uh, scholar athlete team, uh, with another very high average of over 97. Coach Matt May, uh, Josephine Budd, Molly Goulet, Andrea Malik, uh, Becca Spry, Anna Zarek, uh, Sierra George, Emma Kuhn, Erica Reiki, and Veronica Swan. Our varsity unified uh, bowling team. Uh, which competed in their third season this year, um, third season ever of unified bowling. Uh, this year, uh, Alex Hennessy um, got a new position in another district, so Matt Groot uh, took over the unified bowling position um, with an average of 95.7. Uh, Preston Berrios, Zach Kuhn, Sarah George, Noah Kellogg, Aiden Mays, Noah Tones, Cody Kuhn, October Edminster, Adam Hernandez, Amaret Laws, and Brennan Mays. Uh, our varsity boys cross country team, Coach Rob Caster, assisted by Daniel Olson. Um, very large roster. Um, we're proud of this year. Uh, super successful season, which we'll do at another meeting. Uh, Joe Camblin, Caleb Coleman, Jace Fredrickson, Lucas George, Reed Haltner, John Murphy Jr., um, Ethan Perone, Jace Smith, Adam Card, Ethan Coleman, Chad French, Broden Haltner, Ian Murphy. Michael Oberdorf, Jacob Rodriguez, and uh, Max Young. Varsity girls soccer team, uh, Coach Brenton Colling, uh, with an average of 94.6. Uh, 
uh, Natalie Bates, Jenna Habert, um, Elizabeth Neslick, Jada Solomon, Emma Thayer, Catherine Verdine, Davina Bugue, Megan Napoleon, Kaylee Pettit, Gabby Taylor, and Anna Verdine. Our varsity golf team uh, with an average of 94.5, uh, Coach Henry Caparis, uh, Preston Berrios, uh, you see again from Unified Bowling, uh, Ben Fisher, Ben Winkler, Landon Burkhart, and Conan, Connor Visengard. Thanks again, Kyle, for help me out. It's okay. It's a, uh, I appreciate the help for sure. Uh, varsity girls cross country um, with an average of ninety three point seven. Uh, coach again, Rob Caster and Daniel Olson, Sky Caprin, Grace Holes, Grace Holmes, uh, Ty Hilfiger, Trinity Wells. Fall cheerleading team. Uh, making scholar athlete team, uh, which is a huge accomplishment for this program. Um, uh, Coach Olivia Millet gives uh, gets all the credit for really um, uh, guiding the academic purpose of, of our school through her team. She does a great job of that. Uh, Alexander Barber, Liberty Grady, Lisa Hosmer, Lexi Millet, Carly Russell, Alexa Diaz, Sophia Hassler, Anna Lance, and Alana Ransko. Then our varsity boys soccer team with an average of 91. Uh, coach Mike Palmer, assistant coach is Luke Petrosino. And we have Addison Bump, Caleb George Cady, Trent Horton, Noah Kellogg, Morgan Miller, Aiden Perez, Jose Ventura, uh, Beto Caraballo, uh, Zach Hurd, Tyler Horton, Elijah Malik, Edgardo Oliveira, and Ethan Russell. And as I, I shared previously, we also we do recognize uh, at our school level uh, the JV girls soccer or the JV um, teams that achieve an average of over ninety um, uh, for JV girls soccer. Uh, coached by Jan Damick, uh, Carly Baker, Melia Brown, Sophia Delfs, Brooklyn Graham, Cynthia Hernandez, Eliana Shales, Kayla Stevens, Gabby Baker, Kendall Carr, Raina George, Bailey Harris, Ava Ransko, Destiny Smith, and Avery Burbridge. Next up is our JV boys soccer team, coached by Jane Grogan, uh, Cameron Baker, Carter Cruz, Jalen Canale, Jaden Koleski, uh, Jonah Petten, Cole Talbot, uh, Kensington Wilk, Grayson Cole, Lucas Hurd, Tony Canale, uh, Anthony Merced, uh, Luciano Rank, and Doug Wells. Our JV boys golf team, uh, Coach Chris Anderson, average 92.4. Much harder with a smaller roster uh, to reach that number, but Andrew Flock, Ethan Tonkinson, and Eric Finn qualified. Our JV girls volleyball team with an average of 91.78. Uh, Coach Craig Sutherland, uh, Melania Glanton, Malia uh, Kuzmenko, Elisa Muscura, Melina Gullover, and Kayla Miller. And last but not least, these are our uh, athletes who had a 90 plus average, even though the team average uh, did not um, uh, get to 90. I will say uh, it's not on here. Varsity football, I think, missed out by less than a point. Um, and JV football was close as well. Uh, but those athletes with a 90 plus average to participate in those sports Carlos Boiso, Adam Hernandez, Zach Millette, Michael Peters, Davon Wright, Tyler DeLine, Lucas Lyon. Andreas Parrish, and Alex Ransko. Then on J JV football, uh, Caleb Briggs, Giancarlo Colon, Ethan Menchie, Carter Bumpus, Michael McGavisk, and Lindsey Miller. So uh, just in summary, uh, this is a super impressive list. It uh, reemphasizes and um, reminds us all the time that uh, athletics and um, academics go hand in hand, uh, not just in interscholastic educa or educational athletics uh, throughout the state, but I really do think we do a great job here in Newark uh, systematically through our teachers, our coaches, our athletes to, to use athletics as a tool 
um, to um, help our students achieve academically is we know that's priority one. Um, I appreciate uh, being able to read this. Again, I say this, I've said this for two years. Really wish everybody could be here. We could all be in the same room uh, and, and cheer for our students uh, in person uh, and their coaches as well. But uh, until we can do that again, uh, I am appreciative that, uh, you know, we can come on here and at least recognize them and read their names. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Corey, and to all of our hardworking athletes. And yes, we hope someday we can all be in the same room again yeah. soon, too. That would be wonderful. All right, next is public comment. Uh, I did not receive anything via email. Uh, I do understand uh, that someone did want to make a public comment. Again, we'll give uh, my email, yvonne.mctaggart at newarkcsd.org, or you can reach out to Superintendent Hasenauer at susan.hasenauer at newarkcsd.org. I do apologize for the quick switch to a remote meeting tonight. Uh, so we hope that if you did have something of concern, please reach out to us so that we can respond back to you. 7.1, respond, acknowledge a previous comment, uh, public comment. We didn't have any last uh, meeting. We are all caught up on that. 7.2 is to revisit the Board of Education goals and to do so quarterly. Um, we had a discussion that um, it might be good to kind of start putting this on our agenda quarterly to kind of revisit and keep it fresh, um, see what it needs. Um, Susan, I see you unmuted. What else did you want to add that I forgot already? Anything? No, nothing. I was just going to um, refer you to the front of your meeting agenda yep. where all three of your main goals are located. Um, <clears throat> and then I do have your action items in front of me. So I didn't know if you wanted me to kind of go through that with you, because I know one of the main things that we did talk about was the communication goal, goal number three in particular. Right. Um, but if you want me to kind of review some of the action items under each goal, we can do that. That's up to you how you want to proceed. Any input from the board? I mean, I think it would be good to refresh. We could probably do a brief summary of each, kind of refresh new year, bring it forward. So we can plan quarterly how to review each of those, if that works. Okay. All right. So goal number one, um, as indicated on your agenda, is to ensure a high quality academic program and college and career readiness. The Board of Education will set, monitor, adjust, and evaluate clear goals that will lead to the continuous improvement of the district. Um, you have two action items within and underneath that goal. One, that you would adopt district goals in an action plan aligned to the strategic plan developed by the superintendent. So you did do that in the fall. And then we will begin the strategic planning process again in the spring. And we'll review all of those. We'll identify where we are um, underneath those goals. We'll also do that um, within our board retreat as well. Um, so we're right on target with that at this point. Um, and then your second action item is conducting a self-evaluation and updating and revising your goals and an action plan yearly um, in alignment with my goals and um, the measures that are included in the academic piece. Um, and so that occurs in the spring. So we're on target with that. And I know when we look further down, we're gonna be talking about a board retreat and the date mm -hmm. for that. Um, and that's when you will move forward with looking at and monitoring your own performance. Um, you have been participating in professional development opportunities um, as we've moved along and everyone knows um, what their goal is around professional development. Um, and so under that first goal, you seem to be moving along and everything seems to be moving forward at the pace of which it should. Do you have any questions with that? Okay. 
Your second board goal is to have a clear understanding of board and superintendent roles and responsibilities in order to set board operating procedures, lead and govern the district through policy. Um, <clears throat> in order to do that, your action items were that the board and the superintendent would participate in annual retreats. And again, on our agenda, we're setting up our annual retreat and choosing a date for um, winter 2022. And um, we had our, so we, we had two of them, summer and then fall. Mm -hmm. um, so we did su summer when we connected with all of the board members. Mm -hmm. Um, so fall 2021 was to be determined. So we're just a, a few weeks off of that one where we're determining the winter, but then we'll do a spring one. So we'll just push it up. Um, and then lastly, the board will identify and set purpose and guidance for implementing board subcommittees. And you've done very well with that because we've identified all of the subcommittees and they're all up and running with a set purpose, with guidelines, with dates, and with minutes being posted now to the website. Okay. And then the last one I, I believe is what we wanted to talk about further tonight. And yes. th this is kind of what um, tonight's purpose was to really look at the Board of Education will establish collaborative relationships with parents, students, staff, and community members to enhance communication in three critical area, three critical areas, areas, sending communication, receiving communication, and direct feedback. And so um, the first, I'm gonna start with the second action item because that's enhancing the Board of Education website. And that has been reconfigured with board docs, but our website as a whole is being reconfigured and your spot will be even further enhanced and released July 1. And you'll have input into redesigning all of that according to how you wanna see that fit. Um, and your first action item was the board will work with the superintendent to gain input from the community on key topics. And based on our previous conversation, and this is where I'm gonna turn it back over to you, um, Yvonne, um, one of the desired outcomes was having a community forum or a fireside chat and coffee shop talks that would really allow the community to interact with you and provide feedback and you could have that two-way dialogue. Right. Um, so that was something that you said you wanted to discuss. So that's where we are with that action step. So that is something that we would <coughs> need to consider um, the format and how we would approach that. Um, certainly want to be more visible and open and available to our community in maybe a different setting than the boardroom itself, um, which can tend to have a different <laughs> feel or whatever, for sure. So is that something, you know, what would that look like? What would it feel like? Is that something, you know, do you feel that's something we should do? I feel it's something that we should do, at least consider um, something in that, in that type of a format uh, and do it soon. You know, we have a lot going on. Um, I know everybody's busy, whatever, but you know, I don't want to put it off maybe till spring, you know, maybe in the next month or two. So any input or thoughts so far, or maybe like what it might look like or how you would want it to look or anything at all? We, we could start, uh, I mean, like there are PTA meetings that are going on. They're going on in Zoom. We could uh, um, make an appointment with one and uh, go in with them and have them ask questions or <clears throat> start with little things like that. Okay. So start. Anyone else? Um Sue, so how was your fireside chats? Um, how did that go back when you first started? Did you get a lot of response like that via Zoom? There was about um, 15 to 20 people there, I would say. Um, so what I did is I did a, a presentation first and then I opened it up for comment and just question and answer. And it was a brief, it was a very brief um, presentation, just like, Here's what we're doing. Here's what we're looking at. You know, what are your concerns? What are your thoughts? Both positive 
um, you know, what, what should we change? What should we not change that type? I felt like it was positive. Um, it lasted about an hour. We followed up with, um, each person, um, if they made a suggestion following that. So it was reciprocal in nature. I, 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 I actually, you know, as we move forward in the strategic planning process, this would be a really good first step because as a board, you're going to meet with the community in your own forum around strategic planning. Right. This might really allow you to get a sense of the community and see how they're feeling and what and where they want to move as like a pre requisite piece. Mm -hmm. Julie, did you have something else? I, I was thinking that we could do a fireside chat via Zoom okay. um, and try to possibly hit two different times during the day. Um, if we can do like one before a second shift started, mm -hmm. so like around one and then sometime like I think six, six o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. um, I know PTA meetings are starting to uh, start at seven. So, you know, either start at seven and make sure that we're not on top of them or, right. um, you know, do it before theirs. Mm -hmm. even. I feel six can sometimes be hard for our yep. families, you yeah. know, um, but we could definitely kind of gauge that out. I like the idea of possibly two different times to maybe catch two different groups. I think that would be beneficial for sure. Um, I don't know, I, I guess I would worry about having it via Zoom, depending on when we have it, because if we're looking to kind of be a little more, and I appreciate where you're coming from for right now, but maybe we could even, it's gonna take a little bit of planning anyhow. So mm -hmm. maybe we'd be a little more out, things might feel a little, safer or we could distance or maybe have certain people sign up for different times so that we can keep it safe. Um, I think I would prefer to do it in person, but we could see how that goes. I think we would get a little better, maybe feedback or a little more kind of at ease mm -hmm. kind of culture. I'm not sure. I'm just trying to make it, some people just can't make it to a meeting. That's true. So Zoom helps them. So maybe okay. doing both maybe doing like the afternoon one o'clock session for Zoom and then the evening session in person All right. on the same day. Can't you, can't you Zoom it and be in person? Yeah. Yes. People that can't yeah. be there can Zoom into the meeting. I mean, they can do both. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I like the idea that uh, with a presentation, I think a, maybe a brief presentation from us maybe further explaining what the board's responsibilities are in this and what, what it is our purpose is, because I think some people just don't fully understand that mm -hmm. would be good. Um, be and great. might add some clarification for people that, you know, that do have a basic understanding mm -hmm. and then um, soliciting questions ahead of time so that, because it's kind of like a classroom when you think about it, right? So all the teachers that we have here, mm -hmm. if one, if one student's asking a question, chances are the rest of the class has that same question. So if we solicit questions ahead of time, mm -hmm. then after the presentation, we could go ahead and answer those questions because they're probably similar questions that a lot of other people in the community might have. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a great idea. Mm -hmm. So when do you think you would want to do this? Well, I agree sooner rather than later. Um, we're already into January, so mm -hmm. Sometime, I don't think it'd be on the realm of possibility to get this organized by February or early March. I think that'd be fair. We'll have a new board member by then. I think that would be good. Um, another good asset and another good point. So why don't we plan for that? We can kind of get some, some outlines working of how we want it to work and maybe put together something for a presentation, which I think is a great idea and uh, go from there. That sounds good. I think we only have one meeting in February, but we can figure something out, right? Yeah. Do we want to like introduce ourselves as like who we are outside of the board? Sure, we could. Mm -hmm. It's our show. We can do whatever we want. So, <laughs> yeah. You know, anything to make the community feel comfortable, you know, come on. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
you remember probably, well, at least, you know, I can remember going into my first board meeting or even thinking about running for the board a million years ago, you know, you sit in the back of the room and there's that big table up front, and, you know, you wonder why our students don't speak and some of our community <laughs> even doesn't feel some, as, as comfortable as we would like them to. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'd like a little more easy format. I think that would definitely help get that interaction going and the feedback that we need. Yep, I agree. Okay. So if anybody wants to start putting together some ideas, you know, or, you know, I don't know if we have, we can maybe even work with Kyle and put together a little snippets of ourselves or whatever. Or we could probably use some PowerPoint stuff from our uh, orientation. There's some good slides in there or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, not too lengthy, but enough just to kind of share who we are and what we do and why. Mm -hmm. Sound good? All right. Excellent. I like it. All right. Did we cover everything under three, Susan? Was that it, I think? Yes. Yes, you did. Yeah. Okay. These, these mute buttons are just like the microphone. You gotta like make sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even I'm not even mute mine. I know. They're a little easier than the, the microphone. They're a little so easier. They are slightly easier yeah. for sure. Yeah. Good. All right. Mm. So uh, that moves us right into 7.3, which is the retreat date, which we would like to kind of have you start looking at your calendars. Um, if we can look at them, we will have a new board member and I would kind of like to have something in, in place so that we can plan. Um, I don't know, the Saturday morning thing kind of works. I know we're, you know, it's an extra time, but if we do it early, you know, eight to 12, I bet we could pull off again on a Saturday. Plus it's cold and nobody wants to be outside unless you're a skier or snowboarder. So, um, and that's not me. So I'm available every Saturday until probably May. Um, so <laughs> I don't know if, you know, anybody's going. I'm, so the vote will be on the 8th. Mm -hmm. So we'll have, uh, right, the 8th, do I have that correct? I do. Um, so I saw Ed cringe, by the way, when you said skiers, I saw Ed cringe. Yeah. Um, I don't have children in school anymore. When is February break? 21st. I should know this, right? Is it the week of the 21st? Yeah. 21st, correct. Okay. How about the 19th? Well, that's leading into break. I don't know if we have people vacationing or not. Yeah. Well, maybe not us. Maybe people are going snowboarding. Um, can we plan for the 19th? Ed's got, Ed's got that smile on his face. He's going. He's going. <laughs> he can go Friday night and go after we're done. Um, would the 19th tentatively work? If everybody looks mm -hmm. real quick. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that was the easiest we've ever done. We're going to play on the 19th at 8 a.m., 7.30. 7.30 good. Okay, Russell. Russell would have us there at 5 if he really wanted to. I like 8 o'clock. Russell, it's Saturday. I know. Let's make it 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. That's me. All right. 8 a.m. Great. And we will work on some items for that, too. Wonderful, thank you. Location? Um, I'm assuming BOCES again, correct? That's where we'll probably hold everything. Right, Susan? That's just yeah, easiest. We'll just I mean, make sure it's available. We'll check tomorrow. Right. Make sure it is. Yep. If anything changes, we'll reach out and uh, let you know. All right, 7.4. Well, as I just said, the reminder of the uh, board petition deadline is January 10th the tw uh, of 2022. So hard to say. Conditions are due in the district office by 5 p.m. And the vote will be February 8th. Is it still 9 a.m. to 8 p.m., Ed? Correct. Okay. And that will be, did we determine a place for the vote? High school gym. High school gym. Okay. Just wanted to be sure we we're still able to do that. Great. Okay. Verbal reports, 8.1. Instructional? Yep. Hi, everyone. Um, just really <clears throat> one item, but a big item for this evening. Um, as you may have heard, um, New York State Education Department has canceled the January Regents administration. Um, so I've been working with Nick Ganster. He's going to be working with his team at the high school. Um, traditionally, that um, the Regents are given in what we've referred to as our midterm week. Um, 
And so there's been a combination of regents exams for students, um, lengthier midterm exams. And then typically we've done some um, reviews in preparation for those exams and maybe some opportunities for students to catch up on work. Um, with the cancellation of the regents exam, it will still be necessary to give, um, you know, at least some midterms. Um, we'll have some students, regardless of the outcome uh, from the state in June, that will take some lengthier exams. For example, our students that take um, Gemini courses through FLCC or AP courses. Um, so we're really trying to um, strike a balance there between, um, you know, giving a purposeful exam and also really looking at this as an opportunity um, to maximize learning for our students. And so looking at some potential grade repair opportunities in that type of, um, of work. So Mr. Ganster, um, his department leaders will be meeting um, and putting together a, a plan for that week. Also our goal is to keep students in school as much as possible during that week and keep as much consistency as we can um, for them during the day. So we'll have more to re report or share soon on that, but a little bit of a revamp there. Thank you. Finance seven or 8.2, excuse me. Ed? Uh, you've hit a lot of the uh, same items that I was going to hit uh, <laughs> regarding the uh, Board of Election vote and the Capital Project vote being on February 8th. Uh, so moving down to other uh, financial stuff, our, trans our second transparency report was submitted uh, before the end of December, which is required by the, that one goes to the federal government. Um, so that was more to timely. The Medicaid, the PCG reporting, every once in a while you might hear me mention something about that. Uh, that's going to be starting up again in January. So collecting data, that'll be submitted. Uh, budget work is going to be the focus for the next three months. That's going to be the main thing. Uh, some other items, uh, getting the things submitted for the transparency report, those type of things kind of set it aside for a little bit, but we'll be going back to that. Uh, so we'll be reaching out to the budget committee with some of the historical data and then trying to get some meetings scheduled and going from there to see uh, how, they, if any impact for the uh, budget and anything that they need to share or know or my process and stuff like that. So we'll be doing that with them, setting those dates up. Uh, and we're beginning negotiations with different bargaining unit groups as contracts are firing in June. So lots of things happening. Always is. Thank you, Ed. 8.3 human resources, Dan. Hi, yeah, thank you. Um, in uh, HR, we've been busy hiring a lot of new people um, with the approval of um, the board. We've got uh, new people in, uh, in support positions in each building. We hired a monitor in the high school, aides, and uh, monitors in other buildings too. So I think uh, what we had the what we had uh, the buildings do was to take a look at which positions are their priorities, and we prioritized those positions in each one of the buildings in terms of support. Uh, we're also um, we've completed round one of our middle school principal interviews. Uh, we've got round two next week and round three next week as well. Um, so I know some of the board members, um, Richard and Russell, I really appreciate you um, helping out, and Julie, you offering too. But glad you're sitting this one out. So. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, so we're, we're working on uh, the middle school principal. We've got um, an ELA interview for the high school coming up too, as well as a special ed position um, uh, for Kelly School. So uh, a lot of things in the works right now, a lot of uh, positions still open, but uh, we've been hiring a lot of people lately and, um, you know, we're moving right along. Nice. Good to hear. Thank you. Yep. Hey, Yvonne. Yes. Before we move on, I just kind of, you know, the fact that we're able to attract the kind of talent that we've been attracted to this district, I think, shouldn't kind of be glossed over. I think it points to the quality of the of the district that we're able to attract the kind of talent that we're getting. Because, you know, the last couple interviews that I've had a chance to sit in on and, and, and the kind of people that I've had a chance to meet, you know, I, I, I think it's something that we should celebrate a little bit. So just taking a second to recognize that. Huh. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. It's always, Thank I'm you. always uh, sad because I can never attend them due to my work schedule. So I always depend on you all to do a great job and represent the board. But I do always hear good things. And it's um, good to always continue to hear what sort of talent is coming in and wants to work with work for our district. So thank you. Good reminder. 8.4, Superintendent. Um, I just want to touch base on what <clears throat> is the obvious COVID 
um, and the surge of cases. Um, due to staff absences, we will be going remote for the middle school, both tomorrow and Friday, and then reevaluating the situation over the weekend. Um, information has gone out to families and to staff. And if you have not seen any information yet, it is on Parent Square. It will be fed through School Tool. It will be on the middle school Facebook page. Um, and on Twitter. So any information that you need will be on that page. But again, we'll be moving to remote. Students will be able to access um, their classes during their actual period times um, <clears throat> and be able to meet with their teachers with the exception if their teacher is absent, then that teacher will um, send their own parents swear directly to families and to students, um, showing them how to access work in their absence. Um, with that said, we obviously are seeing a, a surge in our community and this is some of the consequences to that surge to have um, staff not available. We're doing what we can to keep our staff and our students safe and secure. Um, we did distribute masks to all of our staff and all of our students um, as a gesture to say, you know, it's important to wear your masks and to be safe for not only yourself, but for others. I know people question, do our kids have to wear these particular masks? And the answer is no, they don't have to wear the masks that we're giving them. It really was about equity and access and um, providing an opportunity for everyone to have a, a clean new mask. We still have disposable masks at our school. And if your child wants to wear any mask that they're comfortable in, that's acceptable as well. So really it, it just was to say, um, we're taking this seriously. Um, and then simultaneously, we're also passing out testing kits to families. So we had our first um, dispersion of those kits tonight from four to six. And we handed out close to 500 kits for families um, that are in our family's hands right now. We will be dispersing them again tomorrow um, in a pickup fashion. Tomorrow's is between 10 and 12 in the Perkins loop. So if you weren't able to make it tonight and you want a test kit for your student, for your child, um, we're giving out one kit per child. So if you have four children, you get four test kits and there's two tests in each kit. So you, you really get eight. Um, and so that's tomorrow. And if you are unable to make either one of those distributions, please just call our office, um, contact Stacy Warren or Christina Martin, and we can set up a time for you to pick up those kits. Um, but again, we're looking at everything. This is um, temporary for the middle school. It's just Thursday and Friday. We will reevaluate over the weekend. Kids have taken home their computers and their work will be accessible online. That's it for me. All right, thanks. Sorry. Oh, can I, can I add one more thing? Because sure. I'm looking at Chris Corey now and I just wanted to reiterate that athletics are moving on as scheduled. Oh. So, so everything in the district is moving as scheduled with the exception of the middle school due to staffing is going remote. Just to add clarity. So none of our sports have been affected so far. I did hear a little bit today from like youth or something, right? So. Now, I, I can turn it over to Chris for that, but to my knowledge, no. Okay. Go ahead. Well, Chris. I mean, we, we haven't like shut down or canceled like anything globally. They're, they're like every other district. We've had to cancel um, individual games or reschedule. Okay. Tonight we had to we had to reschedule our JV boys basketball game tonight. Okay. Um, things like that, but nothing systemic. And what okay. Sue was talking about it really is we're going to continue with middle school athletics while the middle school is going remote. We'll have practices after school if if kids can get there, essentially. So. Okay. Thanks. Aren't you glad you stayed on? Then I got to ask you a question. Thank you. Any, anytime. <laughs> All right, Susan, you were all set? Yes. Okay. Uh, nine is uh, approval of tonight's consent agenda. I need a motion, please. 
uh, Rich and a second by Russell. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Board uh, 10, Board Development Committee reports monitoring the board. 10.1 is board committee meetings and related updates. Let's see, who's covering tonight? Russell or Julie? Legislative NISBA, Four County, and Wayne Finger Lakes Boses. I'll let you two duke it out. Go ahead, Russ. <laughs> and there's a legislative meeting uh, this weekend, uh, Saturday. Um, and uh, there'll, so there'll be more about that the next uh, meeting. Um, there's a board meeting coming up on the 18th, 18th. and that'll be Zoom. And on the, uh, uh, we are sending a representative to the NISBA Equity Symposium and Advocacy Institute. Uh, the uh, um, executive director of Four County is going to that as, a, as we have always sent the executive director to that. And he will report back uh, when he gets back. On the 24th, uh, there's a general membership meeting uh, and Rick Timms will be talking about advocacy for public school districts, which gets us started for the uh, legislative and uh, capital conference that's coming up on February 2nd, uh, and the NIS NISBA lobbying day, which uh, we just had some uh, information from Brian Fessler today. They aren't sure if that's going to be live or Zoom. Uh, either we're going to Albany or we're not, so we don't know that yet. Okay, thank you. That's it. That's it. That was enough. Thank you. All right, 10.2 is Board of Education subcommittee reports. Did the audit committee meet? Yeah, I can't recall. We got a meeting pending, correct, uh, Ed? I thought there was something in the works. Yes, so they everybody got back to me with some times and it looks like Tuesday the 11th at four o'clock works for people's schedules. Okay. Um, so I just compiled all that just prior to this meeting so we can schedule that. So the next question, Zoom or in person for the committee? I'm on that, right? Yes. I, I got added to that. <laughs> you got added, you are correct. I got added. Um, <laughs> but I guess that's the answer right there. We'll go with the answer right there, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll do Zoom. Yep. All right. Yeah. Um, so that, that will be the, uh, just so people are aware, that's the uh, extra classroom audit and the uh, single audit, which is the federal funds, so. Um, so that's coming up from there. Uh, the budget committee, like I said, we'll get back on track with that, get the information, and we'll try to get some meeting scheduled going forwards. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the policy committee did meet. We had a wonderful, robust meeting. I thought it was one of our better ones. We welcomed Dan and Scott to join us on that. Um, anybody want to give a quick, I don't know, Russell can give a yeah, we, uh, we, we looked at, uh, we're bringing to you five of the pol six policies that mm -hmm. we looked at. Um, uh, one is going to be reviewed uh, further. Field trips will be reviewed further. Um, the uh, 3430 is the diversity and equity policy. It is a new policy. It's not required, but it is, uh, uh, it should be there if you've read it. Um, you know, you can understand why, why we need to have it. Uh, Policy 1510 uh, is uh, uh, another non-required policy, uh, but it is a policy that we need to have so people understand um, some of the regulations and part of our uh, how meetings are run. Uh, it's based on education law, based on the uh, public officer's law, and um, it, it, uh, the open government um, regulations, um, and is, is kind of necessary for uh, us to have that. Um, 6160 uh, is uh, just got some language changes in it. It's not professional development anymore. It's professional learning, that type of, type of thing. Um, and uh, uh, the field trips uh, we're holding on for now um, <clears throat> because uh, it's going to be reviewed uh, by the superintendent and the principals. Uh, we have set dates. We have meetings for every month going forward uh, through June. Uh, so we're, we've got a review policy that um, um, we're going to be chunking through policies and we're uh, going to start looking at a process for creating the regulations manual uh, that Dan is going to review. 
Uh, so that's, that's uh, uh, it was very exciting meeting. Um, there, um, I don't know if everybody's seen the minutes from that meeting, but I like the format of the minutes and we should get those up on the website um, uh, soon so the public can see and you know, keep us legal because we're supposed to have our minutes from our committee meetings up within the 14 days, uh, just like our regular board meetings. Um, so that uh, that was kind of a kind of a, a, a night a good productive meeting. Thank you. Certainly was. Thank you. Uh, facilities committee, you met before tonight's meeting. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you, and uh, thank you, Julie, for joining another committee. I appreciate You're that. Welcome. Um, You're welcome. <laughs> anybody want to summarize or tell us what you talked about? Julie? Uh, uh, we talked about the voting on for the new, um, uh, my head is so cloudy right now. Um, yeah, Ed, please help me out. <laughs> I am so like. They're talking about the capital campaign? The capital, yeah, capital project. And it's going to be all of the boilers and the new air conditioning throughout the buildings for the primary buildings, which will be nice for our students. And we are looking to do a postcard of that so that our public can know about our capital project and also the election. Um, anything else, Ed? Uh, no, you pretty much hit it all. I'm just kind of scanning the notes right here. Um, you know, a uh, question was just asked for some clarification as to the boilers. Um, uh, currently, right now, uh, there is steam heat replacing that with a hot water um, heat and things like that to be a little bit more energy efficient. New boilers would be energy efficient also uh, and those type things. So you pretty much hit everything else, how we're going to get information out, trying to set up a small meeting. Uh, before the next one for community uh, participation uh, and those type things so they can come and ask questions if they want uh, and that kind of thing. So that was it. And then I just got looking, Julie, we signed you up for facility audit. So that kind of gives you a little break on that one. So that one we left open for the new person okay. I, in case they're interested yeah. in writing. So, yep. Yeah. So I, I went in panic mode for a moment and all of a sudden I'm like, wait a minute. And then I'm like, nope, nope. So we had you, we had you join the facility committee and not the audit. So, oh. <laughs> so yep. So you, you only got one new addition instead of two. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there you go. And, um, and there, there was one other, one other thing is we did hear from Mike Steves. who were talking about the ongoing repairs to the current boilers to keep them running. Um, so uh, that that's important. We're not these boilers are failing, so we need to we need need to get them replaced, and we need to let the public know that. Yeah. Uh, can I just have some clarification on the on the postcard communication? So is that the only thing we're doing? Are we still doing a newsletter or not? So due to the time constraints, we want to get the information out. So the postcard will take care of kind of the information, uh, quick information piece of it. It would be the biggest postcard that you could mail okay. uh, to get as much stuff on it, um, not mm -hmm. the little small ones. Uh, and we'll, I'll get a hold of BOCES tomorrow because I know they've done some services like that for other school districts. So they probably have a generic layout uh, that they can tweak and make it ours uh, in a quick fashion. Um, they'll probably even get them printed and we can get them out to the community that way. Uh, that way we can do the mass mailing and hit every, every person in the community. Also with that, um, I'll try to get the, the small meeting beforehand so people have a chance to come in and talk to us. Because it is just very quick about the, uh, the, 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 the special meeting is basically voting on the capital project and the board member. It's such a fast turnaround by the time we compile the whole newsletter. Uh, that process right there is a three-week process, and three weeks we're at the at the vote. <laughs> okay. And also, the postcard can point people back to a web page that we can keep updated. Right. So Brenda Pittman's also doing a story on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And will there be any? Do you think we'll have room at least for board candidate names and maybe a link to the website then as well? So with the, the coming out on the 10th, I can double check with BOCES to see that with the deadline being at five o'clock on the 10th, please do not show up at a 501. It 
before five o'clock um, because we have to close it at five o'clock. Uh, so we can take a look. Uh, today's the fifth. By the time I get to BOCE, if I look at stuff, I might be able to include some candidates' names on there. Yes. We'll Maybe see. even, yeah, even just, just their names and then the right. link to the website. That's, I mean, at least right. something to get that right out there. If, if we're able to do that, I would like that. So mm -hmm. we'll see. What we can do. And if not, I understand because yep. it is yep. tight time. Thank you. But if we, if they put it together really quick, by the time we approve it, if we know we're going to add names, it could leave a little spot blank. Right. We can add that last minute and then that'll be quick and then we can get it out. So I'll reach out to both see, see what magic they can work on their end for us. All right. I appreciate that. Thank you. Instructional committee. I don't know if you met or not or if you have anything you did. Actually, we had a, a very good meeting. Krista organized a very good meeting. Um, Brad wasn't able to make it, but um, several teachers and coaches from the primary level were there. We met at Perkins School to discuss their processes for selecting curriculum oh. and some of the changes that have been made in the curriculum over the last several years and how those came about. And it was very enlightening to see the process, the, the intense, and I'm not, I'm not exaggerating when I say the intense thought process that goes into the choosing the curriculum and getting it up to speed. And you could see the enthusiasm. That, that was the fun part of the meeting really was the enthusiasm that the teachers and coaches had um, when they talked about the curriculum and, and, and the changes that have been made in the positive direction that they felt things were going. And, you know, one of the, um, probably, probably the comment that stood out the most to me was one of the, one of the teachers or coaches, I don't remember which one said uh, that what she liked best were the protocols that get the students to think deeper and the, the critical thinking that we're fostering in the students, which from my perspective as a former teacher at the higher ed institutions, where every, every institution of higher ed says that they teach critical thinking, but I don't know if they really do. To see that being such an intense focus, even at the primary level, was really encouraging and very exciting for me to see that we're already thinking about that so early in our students' uh, academic careers. So um, I'll try to draft up a bit of a report. Um, I don't know, Krista, did you write up anything or is there anything you wanted to add about that? Um, no, um, I think you did a great job explaining and I have not written anything up, but I certainly can, can do that or add to it, whatever you'd like. I'll, uh, I'll write up my notes and send them to you, see if there's anything you want to add to that and then uh, okay. we can get those posted as well. Cause you're right, Russ, we, right. we haven't posted anything I don't think for our instruction right. committee yet. I mean, yep. the committees do need to have uh, um, uh, minutes out there and, and it would be really nice to be able to pass some of that excitement on. Yeah. Um, to to mm -hmm. us and to the public. Mm -hmm. We do have some from our other meetings, Rich. We just didn't do the last one, I don't think. So I think we're okay there. Um, our next meeting will be January 31st, um, I think with Kelly School and we're um, working on that. So um, Brad and Rich, I'll touch base with you, but I think we were wondering if one to 2.30 would work again on that day. Brad, I don't know with your schedule, is that usually an okay time? Yeah, last time I just had uh, mandatory in-service training, so I should I'm good for the year, so that'll be fine. Okay, so I'll um I will send the invitation out to you, and we'll plan on that then. Okay. Oh. Great, thanks. Very good. Co-curricular committee. We have a meeting next week, right? And then you're muted, Sue. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we gave our, our last report following our meeting um, several okay. weeks ago, and now we have an upcoming meeting um, okay. in the month of January. Great. You know, I made a, I made a quick note here about uh, if we do this presentation for the community, whatever, you know, these committees are pretty robust. And when I think back through the years, um, I would have never thought we would have these and the, the work that we're doing and how much more engaged we are as board members within the district. So thank you to all of you who participate in these committees and take the time to do that and are engaged in, in helping us all move forward. So that should be a key point to our, uh, to our little presentation when we do it to the community. So nice work and thank you all for your time. 10.3, first reading of the following policies. Uh, I think Russell already read through them all. I don't know that I need to read through them again. Uh, do I have a motion? Russell, and a second, Julie, thank you. 
Any questions or comments or anything for just this first reading? All right, all in favor? Aye. Thank you. All right, uh, we're at future agenda items. Gaming Club is still there and we've already reminded the public several times about the vote and the petitions, which is good because that's what we need to do. Anybody have anything further? Hmm. Anything future? Good. Everybody right. stay healthy. Yes, please do so. I appreciate uh, everybody pulling together for the Zoom and the uh, patience of the community while we just did this for tonight so that we could uh, at least still have a meeting. So please stay safe. I just need a motion to adjourn, please. I move. Julie, second. Rich, all in favor? Aye. <laughs> Aye. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Night, Kyle.